Hello everybody and uh, my name is Narendra Kumar and we are from Narendra Academy and today we'll do activity 6. It's a beautiful concept in this activity and I would like you to listen carefully word by word when I read this wonderful textbook which has broken down the concept into such beautiful parts. Take two beakers, take two beakers of equal volume. So what are we doing here? We are taking two beakers of equal volume and take 250 grams of water in one beaker, 250 grams in one beaker and 1 kg in another beaker. Note down their initial temperatures and they should be the same, initial temperatures. Note down their initial temperatures using a thermometer, initial temperature should be the same. Now heat both beakers, heat both beakers till the temperature of water in the two beaker rises to 60 degrees centigrade. So this should rise to 60 degrees centigrade and this also should rise to 60 degrees centigrade. Note down the heating times required to raise the temperature of water to 60 degrees centigrade in each beaker, heating times. So you, you check the heating time, heating time here, heating time here. What will you notice? Which beaker needed more time? That's all. That's a simple question. Which beaker needed more time? This also went to 60 degrees centigrade. This also went to 60 degrees centigrade, but which beaker, this or this, needed more heating time? You will notice that you need more time, more time to raise the temperature of 1 kg of water to 60 degrees centigrade when compared to 250 grams of water. That means you need to supply. Time means what? What does time mean? More time is more heat supplied. You need to supply more heat energy to greater quantity of water than lesser quantity of water for same change in temperature. So clear, for same change in temperature, the amount of heat Q absorbed by a substance is directly proportional to its mass. Now the truth is clear. This is a fantastic truth. The more the mass, more heat, heat is required. When delta T is constant, so is one more important point is delta T is constant. You can't have more time of heating here and uh, when delta, when the change in temperature should be called constant. Heating times are different, change in temperature, delta T is constant. Now take one liter of water, this is one activity. The second, in this only the second activity is, take one liter of water in a beaker. Take one liter of water in a beaker and heat it over a constant flame, constant flame. Note the temperature changes, temperature changes for every two minutes, that's all. Note the temperature changes. So two minutes, temperature. Four minutes, every two minutes, temperature. Six minutes, temperature and so on. Note the temperature, the temperature will rise. What do you notice? You will notice that the change in temperature rise with time is constant. Change in temperature rise with time is constant. That means for the same mass, same mass, same body of water, the change in temperature is proportional to the amount of heat Q absorbed by it. Q is directly proportional to change in temperature. When M is constant, So what we'll do now is put these two equations in one place. Let us put it here. What are the two equations we got? Q is directly proportional to M and Q is directly proportional, which means more mass, more, more amount of heat is required. When Q is directly proportional to M, when delta T is constant, to 60 degree only, delta T is constant. And Q is directly proportional to delta T when M is constant.
let us see what does this mean same concept actually we have said nothing new but we are converting the physics into mathematics we are mathematizing measuring as in an equation the physics concept into mathematical concept both have become one now so Q is directly proportional to M, you know proportionality. If A is directly proportional to B, A is equal to constant to M. So Q is directly proportional to M into delta T. So Q is equal to, how do you make a proportionality and equality? Of course, when it's proportional, there'll be some constant by which you multiply. So that constant is, we use the word SM delta T. So that's what, that's what he has written here. Q is directly proportional to delta T. From equation 1 and 2, we get 1 and 2, we get Q is directly proportional to M delta T, which implies that Q is equal to M S delta T. M S delta T. Where S is a constant of a given, uh, of a given substance, this constant is called, actually this is specific heat. This is specific heat. So you can say S is equal to Q by M delta T. What is the meaning of this equation? Let's understand. S is equal to Q by M delta T. The specific heat of a substance is the amount of heat required to raise the temperature of one unit mass. That means one kg or one gram. Unit mass of the substance by one degree centigrade. So if this becomes one and this becomes one, S, is bec S becomes equal to Q. So S is Q when this is one and this is one that is called unit mass and unit change in temperature. How much heat energy is required to raise the temperature of unit mass of substance by one degree centigrade? So the CGS unit, the CGS unit is you take calorie divided by uh, K, uh, CGS unit of specific heat is calorie gram degree centigrade and SI unit unit is uh, SI unit is joules kg kelvin so in si you get this is cgs so cgs unit of specific heat is calorie by calorie per gram degree centigrade and si unit of um, um, specific heat is joules kg kelvin so one calorie per gram degree centigrade is equal to one kilocalorie kg kelvin is equal to 4.186 into 10 to the power of 3 joules per kg Kelvin. We have seen that the rise in temperature depends on the nature of the substance. Hence, the specific heat of a substance depends on its nature. This is a very important point. Rise in temperature depends on the nature of the substance. So, one substance will have one rise in temperature for the same amount of heat. We have seen that. And the substance will have for the same amount of heat at different rise in temperature. <laughs> That's the point. If the specific heat is high, what's the meaning of specific heat is high? Specific heat is high means more heat is required for 1 degree centigrade rise. More heat is required. It is almost like it doesn't want to increase its temperature. The rate of rise or fall in temperature is low for same quantity of heat supply. It gives us an idea of the degree of reluctance. What is the meaning of reluctance? I don't want to do. I don't, suppose you want, uh, you want to, some people say, come write an exam. I say, I don't want to write the exam. It's a reluctance. It doesn't want to increase this temperature. You're giving heat, like wooden piece. You keep on giving heat. It is not rising its temperature, it's reluctance. Specific heat is high for wooden piece. Now we come to a deeper question now. Most deep question deepest question why is the specific heat different for different substances that's a natural question why is it like that same amount of heat we are supplying why is the temperature of one thing rising fast high and the one thing rising low let us find we know that the temperature of a body is directly proportional to the average kinetic energy of particles in the body first of all what is temperature some temperature is high, the degree of hotness is high. What is the meaning? What is what is inside? The average kinetic energy is high. It's moving like this, like this. The molecules of the system have different forms of energy such as, now he's going deeper into the types of kinetic energy, energy of the particles inside. We have linear kinetic energy, rotational kinetic energy, vibrational energy and potential energy. Linear. 
vibrational, rotational kinetic energy. The total energy of the system is called internal energy. Now comes the real answer to the wonder question. The total energy of the system is called internal energy of the system. When we supply heat energy to the system, the heat energy given to it will be shared, right? Between, uh, among the various forms of energy. So some heat energy will go for the linear kinetic energy. Some heat, uh, heat energy will go for the rotational kinetic energy. Some heat will go for the vibrational kinetic energy. And some heat will be stored as a potential energy. This sharing will vary. That is the reason. From substance to substance. The rise in temperature is high for that substance. If the maximum share of heat energy is utilized for increasing its linear kinetic energy. This is the core concept here. If the heat energy is mainly used, maximum used for in increasing its linear kinetic energy rather than vibrational or rotational, then the rise in temperature is high. So it means the linear kinetic energy, if it is high, that means that took the energy, then the temperature is high. This sharing of heat energy of the system also varies with the temperature. That is why the specific heat is different for different substances. If we know the specific heat of a substance, we can determine how much heat is required to raise the temperature of a certain mass of the substance. If we know the specific heat, you know this, then we can know how much Q is necessary if we know the mass and if we know the temperature, the change in temperature. So I suppose I want to say I, I have some 5 kgs of mass. I want to increase this temperature by 10 degrees centigrade. I know it's specific heat that I can find amount of heat required. This is the power we can predict. We'll know what will happen. That is science. That is scientific method. So by using the equation Q is equal to M S delta T. So that completes in depth fully, at least in on one level, the concept of specific heat or in reality what is really happening see same amount of heat is given and rising temperatures are different now we got a deep very deep understanding of this concept and as you go further in your studies this concept only will be more detailed out application of specific heat capacity so where do we see in real life there are many applications of specific heat capacity there in the textbook they have given three very close to your experience the sun delivers a large amount of energy to the earth daily the water sources on earth, particularly the oceans. What will happen to the oceans? It will take in energy. It will not rise its temperature. You know, absorb this energy for maintaining a relatively constant temperature. The oceans behave like heat storehouses for the earth. They can absorb large amounts of heat at the equator without appreciable rise in temperature due to high specific heat of water. So oceans are made up of water. Water has a high specific heat. The sun keeps on giving energy to the water, but the water doesn't start boiling or something. It keeps on absorbing because the specific heat is high. The rise in temperature is low for large amounts of heat. Ocean waters. Now this ocean waters, what does it do? It transports the heat away. Where does it give the heat? To the North Pole and South Pole. Ocean water transports the heat away from the equator to areas closer to the North and South Poles. This transported heat helps moderate moderate not very high low. the climates in parts of the earth that are far from the equator so in a way it, it gives about a uniformity of temperature not too much variation second point is watermelon brought out from the refrigerator retains its coolness for a longer time than any other fruit mango all that because it contains a large percentage of water because watermelon has water in it and water has a greater specific heat you keep a watermelon, it doesn't get cooled. Cooling is the opposite process. Same thing, specific heat is not only for rising temperature, it's also for falling temperature. If you take away heat, the temperature doesn't come down easily. A samosa appears to be cool outside. So you take a samosa, it's nice, okay, it's not very hot. It will come. It has happened to me many times. The inside curry will give you the heat. Why? A samosa appears to be cool outside, but it is hot when we eat it because the curry inside the samosa touches your tongue and it contains ingredients with higher specific heat. So the, the inside some, uh, the curry has got a higher specific heat. Higher specific heat means much more heat is required. It doesn't 
come down in, in its temperature easily. The outer part came down easily. The inner part did not come out. The outer part became more cool. The inner part did not become more cool. Two different sensations. It's very deep point. Okay, that completes our activity 6 and actually this is part of the specific heat concept activity 5 2 3 5 everything is specific heat only so activity 6 is specific heat. so we got two concepts core concepts here one is the concept of the difference between heat and temperature that you know you, sh you should see the video again and again to get a clarity read the textbook four times you get 10 points and the second concept is specific heat Okay, we'll further detail it out in a little when we start mixing. What will happen when we mix substances? We'll see that. Then we'll go to evaporation, boiling, you know, freezing, all those concepts, and that is the whole heat chapter. Thank you so much. This is Narendra Kumar, and we are from Narendra Academy. Thank you.